because you want your front bracelets to kind of start at kind of the highest point of your back bracelets. Um, so you want it kind of to be kind of where this hair is roughly. Again, in the Continental and the show trims, it all is really based on um, your dog's build, what your dog needs to look its best. But these are just general rules of thumb um, to start. So I just usually hold the leg, I usually hold the hair down, but you don't want to really be stretching the skin too much because then you might place things where you don't want to place them. So I usually just hold just the hair down lightly. And we're going to go to above the elbow with our clipping. Um, so I'm going to go, hopefully you can see this. Maybe I'll bring it closer for shaving these parts. So elbow is there. So I'm going to go just about there with it. If you leave too much hair, if you leave all the way to the elbow, then you end up having these like sleeves that hang down. Um, so generally for most dogs, you would go a bit above the elbow. So as you can see, I just went just a bit above the elbow. His elbow bend is there. And I'm just up a bit from it. So the same thing on the inside which you won't be able to see from there, but I'm going to the same point on the inside of there. I'm going to make sure that you're not angling down too much in the front, that it's fairly um, kind of straight across when the skin isn't stretched. Um, so that's going to be my French leg shave. And then we can move on to the rear leg. Um, so we are going to do this at um, an angle. You're usually two to three fingers above the hock. I'm approximately two fingers above the hock at the back. And then you kind of want to go almost pretty much to the bend in the front um, as kind of your angle. I usually push out the little part here so that I can kind of clip it as a straight line. He's got a few scabs on his legs right now from me playing outside, so if I'm catching on things, it's probably just some scabs that he has. And then wild. And then I'm just going to continue going up the leg. We do not have a competition, um, either grooming or confirmation or anything, anytime in the near future. So I'm not necessarily going to be going for the most absolute perfect scissoring or clipping job. I'm just going to uh, kind of be showing kind of what I do for this trim, kind of the main points and I'm going up the inside of the leg the same way I'm going up the outside of the leg. For now I'm just going to not go too deep into these sections here. Just because I'll talk about them in a second. I already did his um, groin area and everything as well since the groin's they're generally all the same to clip no matter what trim you're doing. Um, but, uh, I'm not sure you got put. stretching the fur to get it out, or the skin to get it out of the um, divot there. It's got a few scabs inside here too. Oh, he does to himself. Okay. 
with approximately the leg shave. You can see I've got that angle there. And then you just want to balance your dog. So the jacket should take up about two thirds of the dog and then the rest of it is kind of the rosettes and on. Um, generally for most dogs, that's about two fingers behind the last rib. Um, but every dog is a bit differently, built a bit differently. Some have longer rib cage, some are shorter. Um, some people also feel that in the modified trim, um, you want to have your jacket a little bit further forward. I don't tend to find that on this dog anyways. Um, some they say they look too tubey if you put it where a normal um, continental would sit, which is about the two fingers back. Um, but for me, um, I find that approximately his last rib is kind of here, approximately two fingers back from that. Seems to work fine for my dog. Um, so I like to part it so that I can kind of see where I want things. You know, I don't want this hair hanging over because then if I come in and I take that off, I might end up taking too much off of those areas. I'd rather just scissor it in. Um, so have your dog standing as straight as you can and then you're going to find that two fingers behind or wherever you feel it fits best for your dog and that's where you're going to start your line. So I usually start at the top just following again that line um, and I'm just going to do, going to go pretty much straight in with my clippers. These are set on a 40 and I'm just going to go down here, hopefully I'm not blocking you, just going to go down here in a straight line as I can and I'm just pulling it just a little bit back each time. I have a tendency to um, shave a bit too much, so I'd rather start with shaving very little, and then if I want to add more, I can. So then I'm just clearing out the shaved hair, and I'm just going to come through and do that exact same thing. Again, going all the way down to this point, in a straight line as I can. Clear that. As you see there, I've got my line set. And then once I've got that line set, I'm not going to do too much more to this area until I've um, started to scissor these in um, because then I can tell if I need to do a little bit more shaping in there. But I can come in and clear up here until that line. And then talking about the rosette shape. When you've got your dog's tail up, you want your rosettes to sit in front of this tail set. Um, so when you're setting the tail or setting the rosettes, you want to go in front of that line. Um, so when I'm doing the rosettes, especially if I'm just putting them in, I'm going to kind of again do kind of a straightish line here so that I can uh, be sure I'm getting that sitting in front of its tail set. Um, again, some of this hair will need to be cut, so if I pull it a bit forward, you can see now that it is pretty well sitting in front of his um, tail set, and then again, I'll be scissoring in um, this back line. So again, if I need to touch up the back area, I can do that as well. And then you're just gonna take off just around your rosette Again, especially if this is your first few times setting it in, rather leave it too big because you can always make it smaller rather than starting off with it too small and you know needing to grow back out before you can do anything with it. Um, rosettes should almost kiss the jacket and they should almost kiss themselves. Now again, depends on your dog's build and everybody does their trims a little bit differently um, but that's kind of the general rule. Sometimes you see people put rosettes here, um, and that's not, not good. It's not going to make your dog look good. Um, um, and some people will put them way back here, um, and that's not what you want to, to do. The rosette kind of needs to take up the space 
between the jacket and the tail set. Um, and then down here, they've got kind of a bit of a, a V shape here. And my rosette is sitting pretty much just at the top of the um, V shape here. So I'm just going to gently lift again. I don't like to pull because if you pull, you can set things where you don't want to set them. So I'm just going to hold his hair up here. And I'm just going to clean up this line here. And you slightly round this as well, um, just to start your shaping there. And then it's going to be hard to show you the top area here, but we'll give it a try. Um, sorry for all the moving around. Things. It's a little bit funny because I've got one of those um, one of those pop sockets on here, and it pushes this thing around. So I may have to just hold you up here. All right. So for this area here, we just need to be able to split our rosettes apart. Um, so I'm just going to comb to either side of the middle of where his rosette sit. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing um, as I did for doing this line where I'm going to go on straight and just do little lines. Um, you want to start ever so slightly to the other side of center because you're going to be pulling kind of to this side if you understand what I'm saying. Try and have your dog facing as straight as possible, standing as straight as possible um, because otherwise your rosettes are going to be off. And again, I'm just doing teeny little movements because, again, I would rather um, rather do too small of a line and I can make it bigger rather than do too big of a line and be a little bit out of luck. Okay, so you can see that line coming through. And then I will show you this area first. It's getting a little bit hard to hold this up because it's heavy. But uh, we're going to work on this area as much as we can with me holding this. And you're just going to round the rosette thing. So your rosettes are going to be round to circular um, or oval to circular. And so we're just going to clean that up a little bit. And then again, I'm going to just come in here straight and just clean up do that, these lines a little bit. And then again, on the back, we want to round that in as well. And I haven't really done this area yet here. Um, but that's kind of roughly what you're looking at. Um, for that there and again you can clean it up um, as needed once you have um, have them started to be scissored in um, but that's approximately what your current lines and stuff should look like